result of hot gas ingestion just above the ground, a common event in Harriers. Boeing engineers predicted it might happen and designed it out of their new version. But they decide to play it safe and stop testing their vertical system. A month later, Boeing completes all major requirements for the Pentagon ahead of the competition. It's a major landmark, and if anything has them worried, the Boeing executives no, certainly don't show it. It felt great. It, was it looked great. It Did felt it? great, yeah. I'm confident that uh, we are the head of the class now, and I expect to stay there. All right, one more time. The Lockheed plane now needs to prove it's ready for prime time by performing the critical transition from conventional flight to hover to landing vertically. We need to demonstrate that we can land on a solid surface, both to make sure we've got the performance and the flying qualities to do that, to make sure that we've dealt with ground effects such as hot gas ingestion, uh, and to prove that we can land on a, a normal sort of surface without damage or significant erosion to the surface. Okay, converting in three, two, one, now. At a thousand feet, Simon Hargraves engages the lift fan and slows down. With air from the front and exhaust from the rear nozzle in balance, the Lockheed X-plane floats on nearly 40,000 pounds of thrust. This system avoids the problems of the Harrier and Boeing's direct lift. Cooler air from the lift fan creates an invisible barrier that prevents the engine from choking on its own hot gas. And coming down right in the middle of the pad. Hover stop isn't quite right. Let's keep it going down. After two minutes of hovering, Hargraves eases off the throttle and gently guides the X-plane down. Yes, beautiful. No problems at all. Well done, Simon. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good job. Simon. Good job. Yeah, exactly. Right. Easy. Great. Simon, it looked like you've been doing that for 20 years. It felt like it, yeah. It's, uh, it's been a long time coming, and uh, that's the only thing I can say is... Yes! <laughs> it's going to be a tough choice. If, if one guy had, had, had stumbled here at the end, then it would have made it easy. It's not an easy choice. And that's what the government wanted. The government wanted the close horse race, and I think they're going to get it now. In the waning days of the competition, at an undisclosed location somewhere near the Pentagon, JSF Director General Michael Howe takes Nova inside a world where cameras have never been allowed. Behind a wall of security, the secret proposals of Boeing and Lockheed are being evaluated by the government team that will help determine the winner of the Joint Strike Fighter program. This is where the proposals are, all electronic, of course. This is where we've got 200 people off and on coming in to look at the proposals one at a time, gauging them against the operational requirements document. Digging through mountains of data, experts evaluate performance, cost, management, and risk. Some of them are doing aerodynamic performance, figuring out how fast will it go? What is the range? How, how will it turn? What kind of Gs can it sustain? Others are evaluating software and architecture. Now, near the end of this jury process, the results are one of JSF's most closely guarded secrets. We've got about six weeks left by which we're going to take the results of our evaluation, give to the Secretary of the Air Force, who in harmony with the Secretary of the Navy, is going to make a decision of who's going to build the airplane for the warfighter for the next 40 years. As the final decision approaches, known in military speak as down select, Boeing remains confident that its manufacturing know-how and cost-saving designs have made it a winner. I think we all feel pretty good about going into uh, down select, and uh, I think we truly believe that we've got the right vehicle for the customer. But just before it crosses the finish line, Lockheed plans a final dramatic display, a bid for the history books, and bait for the huge government contract. 
In a test flight Lockheed dubs Mission X, its fighter takes off in less than 500 feet, then goes supersonic and lands vertically. Since the Harrier is subsonic, the maneuver is a milestone in aviation history and a direct hit on Boeing's need to strip off parts for vertical landing and reinstall them for supersonic flight. But the Lockheed team pushes its luck too far. They attempt a vertical takeoff and transition to conventional flight. When the plane bobbles in the wind on liftoff, the mission is aborted. But the failure does nothing to dampen Lockheed's legendary mix of technical ingenuity and engineering arrogance. This company believes it has won the right to build the first fighter of the 21st century. We did our part of the bargain. Now the rest of it's up to the government. Five years after the battle began, it's D-Day. The decision is in the bag. The contractors anxiously await the news. In Palmdale, California, Rick Rezebeck and a few hundred members of the Lockheed team gather in the X-plane hangar. We, we did as much as uh, we needed to to win this thing in uh, very, I don't know, comfortably, anxiously, nervous, and confident. <laughs> Did the best we could. Yeah. Did the best we could. While in an office in Seattle, Just a few the leader of Boeing's X-Plane program, Frank Statkiss, and company vice chairman Harry Stonecipher stand by for word. Where are we going to be able to watch this thing from? Right here. Let's watch it. Uh, we're here today to announce the largest acquisition program in the history of the Department of Defense, the Joint Strike Fighter. The value of the program could be in excess of $200 billion. Two contractor teams, one led by Lockheed Martin and the other led by Boeing, have just completed a concept development phase. Both contractor teams met or exceeded the performance objectives established for the aircraft. The process involved, at the end, was about 250 people. And both proposals were very good. Both demo programs were very good. But on the basis of strengths, weaknesses, and degrees of risk of the program. It is our conclusion, joined in by our colleagues from the United Kingdom. That the Lockheed Martin team is the winner of the Joint Strike Fighter program on a best value basis. It is the winner of the Joint Strike Fighter program on a best value basis. Your team, they did an unbelievably good job. I, I could not have asked for more. In a call from Washington, Boeing CEO Phil Condit consoles his team. Is it a winner take off, Phil? Well, at, at this point, the answer is yes. That this decision they've held to the winner take off. You did a great job. I'm sorry. No, you did a great job. I don't know what In my mind, the, the Boeing redesign, the hot gas ingestion, um, makes me wonder if for Boeing to win, Lockheed's lift fan engine had to fail. One of the biggest deciding factors in this competition, in my opinion, was that Boeing never managed to make a vertical landing with the aircraft in complete configuration. They took the inlet cowl off, they took the landing gear doors off, Lockheed Martin made complete vertical landings with the aircraft in the same trim that it could go to supersonic speed in. The X-35, now officially designated the F-35, may become the most widely deployed fighter ever produced. That looks good. I think it's ironic that Lockheed, in 1943, 
in effect gave birth under the auspices of the Skunk Works to Lockheed P-80, which was uh, the first successful operational jet fighter used by the U.S. military. And here it is almost 60 years later, and they are now the winner of uh, the JSF competition, which could result in potentially the last manned jet fighter. It's the, uh, the closing of a, of a major chapter in the history of uh, U.S. air power. With a buy-in from the services and billions in foreign sales, the future of the F-35 looks bright. But fasten your seatbelts. There may be turbulence ahead. Now the fun really begins because Lockheed has to deliver on its cost and performance promises for the JSF. And the government's already talking about cutting the number of airplanes it's going to buy and spending more on unmanned combat air vehicles. And who's one of the top builders of unmanned combat air vehicles? Boeing. Losing the battle of the X-planes may not mean losing the war to dominate the future of American air power. So the last chapter in the JSF story is really yet to be written. What was it like to be the only TV journalist allowed to cover the story from start to finish? How did he even get access? Go behind the scenes with the Battle of the X-Planes producer on NOVA's website at pbs.org or America Online Keyword PBS. To order this show or any other NOVA program for $19.95 plus shipping and handling, call WGBH Boston Video at 1-800-255-9424. is a production of WGBH Boston. Major funding for NOVA is provided by the Park Foundation, dedicated to education and quality television. Science. It's given us the framework to help make wireless communications clear. Sprint is proud to support NOVA. And by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. We are PBS. <laughs>